Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Three teams are done. We've got one game three wild card tonight. Oh, baby. Players only. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball, presented to you by Seat Geek. Woo! Code Talking. Get twenty dollars off your first order with Seat Geek. They're the geeks of seats. Trevor Plouffe, DJ Jazzy Zach on the ones and twos oh. today. Trev, it's an emotional night. Uh, people that live and breathe baseball, whether you're on. The internet or by yourself, there's a lot of emotions right now. Yeah. Three team seasons ended yesterday, uh, including Tampa Bay, which I think we're going to talk about in this first one, but also the Cardinals and the Jays, two teams people really liked a lot. Trev, how are you doing? Big night last night, huh? Big night last night. I'm doing great. Um, there is a lot of emotion you know, in the air. And in my social media comments, I am getting roasted. Mm. Mariners fans coming at me. Fine, I get it. Phillies fans coming at me saying Arenado was never going to make any misplays in the field. And Alec Bohm might. And he hasn't. So I guess I deserve it. I guess that's the bottom mm. line. But I want to play a game with you real quick. Okay. Okay, Zach, you can try, you can try this game too, all right? Okay. I'm going to do something. I want you to tell me what hitter I am. Okay. Ready? Go. Paul Goldschmidt. Oh, my God. Oh. Jeff McNeil. Do you see me choking? Uh, up right there? Sometimes you just got to get the hands through, Big I, Poppy. You know I, that. I thought you were just choking up to get the whole bat in frame. I didn't realize that was the – Oh, no. I was looking at your hands. It was kind of Albert. It was ridiculous – how far, how far high he was choking up last night. But then you led with the knob. Uh, yeah, I love McNeil. I, I, hope, I hope there's a generation of young kids watching that are emulating Jeff McNeil and they're the next greasy Mets studs. Um, <laughs> Trevor, are you ready to do this? Let's hop into it. We had a lot of baseball to cover, man. A lot of strikeouts to cover. We sure do. Uh, and we are Cron Pod. Per usual and as always. So we will start out. <laughs> Not a lot of offense to cover in this one, Trev. The Cleveland Guardians and the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, they kicked off. And sure, do or die. Glass now, McKenzie, fire me up. We talked about the low under, over under. The over under in Vegas was five and a half. It could have been lower than that. It could have been lower than that for two games. Uh, as we found out, a fun, honestly, a fun way to kick off the day of baseball. I, I realize, do I think it crossed into an area of not great baseball? Yes. Um, there was some good pitching. There were some other opportunities. And uh, the Rays lineup, as, a, as I think, you know, via injury, which we've talked about all year, has been a lot thinner than past years. And kudos to them for also shutting out the baby Guardians through nine, through 14 innings. Um, Glass now, what a performance. McKenzie the same way. Uh, and then, yeah, this was just back and forth, wondering who was going to push it across. The Jose Ramirez play currently goes into playoff lore uh, as an incredible one. And then big Oscar Gonzalez, a guy who, Trev, let's be honest, like I, on Talking Baseball, I don't want to say I consider myself the prospect guy, but, you know, you're in the card game. Jim likes when prospects come to fruition. I do some nerdy stuff that lets me know, guys. I wasn't locked in on big Oscar Gonzalez, and he came up this year, and he was slapping it around, and then he gets the big walk-off that, you know, as we talk about the future of this Guardians team, uh, he's a guy that should be in the middle of it for, for the next little while. So with all that, Trev... I know you have some connections to the Rays, Cash, Francona's going out there, pounding gum and tobacco. Uh, where do you want to go with this one? I think we start with the starters, man, who are absolutely 
amazing. Both of them. Glass now, the sharpness of his breaking ball was incredible yesterday. He goes five innings pitch. He's got five Ks. Then Tristan McKenzie matches him and gets better. Punch for punch. He goes six with eight Ks. Both of them don't go up any runs, obviously. Zero, zero until Oscar did his thing. Uh, and that was the name of the game, man. Strikeouts. This, this Guardians team, who that's all we ever talk about is bat to ball skills. They don't strike out. They strike out 19 times. Yeah. Ray strikeout 20. And, you know, I don't know. Did it did it pass over into that realm where it was like tough to watch? A lot of strikeouts. Maybe. But you kind of do have to just applaud the pitchers for coming in and doing their jobs. I and mean, this is pressure packed right. baseball, especially if you're on the Rays side. And you know, the bottom half of the inning, any miscue and your season's over. And these guys are going out there and doing it. So you have to just kind of tip your cap to the pitchers there. Uh, Cash had some quotes about the lineup saying we were just trying to, the classic line of trying to hit a three run homer with nobody on base. Uh, you know, sometimes you, you start to press and then you get into that zone. You know, a home run will put you ahead. And then all you have to do is shut them down for three outs and you're, and you got the game. So you start thinking that way instead of, Passing the baton. Let's get one guy on and see what happens. Um, and that's where we kind of got stuck. And then imagine, like, this is just so funny. You, you just never watch a baseball game. You turn it on. You see this big motherfucker, Oscar Gonzalez, coming up. Mm. And SpongeBob SquarePants yeah. is ringing, you know, in the stadium. And you're like, what's happening right now? Yeah. And then whack. And I told you, the first time I ever saw that guy swing a bat, I was like, this guy is incredible. And he crushed that pitch. And Cleveland's moving on, and C Rose is happy, and the AL mid ain't looking so AL mid anymore. What's up with the AL East, bro? Uh, a couple things here. This Rays mm. team, this Rays team, let's stay here. Uh, this Rays team <laughs> wasn't it this year, and they haven't been it. Uh, you know, we gave them, I've given them a lot of credit for staying in the wild card throughout basically the whole season. And I said, I hoped. When October got here, we were saying, okay, Rays, like B. Lau is back. Um, Wander Franco, who was back and was in this game and had one of the uh, six Rays hits, he was back in this game. Um, no Kiermeyer, no Zanino. Um, I know Z Zanino more of an offensive threat than Kiermeyer. Uh, Kiermaier, though, he's been in a lot of battles. Uh, I've seen him have big postseason moments. That this Rays lineup, I, I mean, they traded for David Peralta. He didn't click over there. Um, this Rays team was thin and hurt all year. Like, Rays teams, I know you, Rays fans, I know you just won't, you don't want to like me, right? I'm a Yankees fan. I'm kind of obnoxious. I get it. Um, but I think any Rays fan, when they take a step back, and you look at all the injuries, and I know every team has their injuries, but the Rays had them in a big way this year. And they were the sixth seed. Like any other year, this isn't a playoff team. This is an 86-win team that didn't make the playoffs. This is the first year that this was a playoff team. And I, I think they were thinned out, depleted by injuries. Kudos to their pitching, and it's what that team and franchise is so good at, and it's why they've been a problem for the past five years, and it's probably why they're going to be a problem for the next five. Um, you know, they were missing, like, a playoff pitching rotation for them. I mean, between Boz and Anderson, Fireice and Kittredge, Poche, Thompson. Um, that being said, it, it comes back to the hitting. Um, and, I mean, Jose Siri, a guy that, you know, is a 600 OPS guy. He was their nine hitter. He's the only guy that pushed a run across for the race in these two games. I mean, 24 innings of baseball. And a solo home run from Jose Siri. Siri is the only run to push across. Guardians get credit. They were at home. The stadium was popping. Uh, and they win behind a Jose Ramirez two-run shot. And then an off. So, I, I don't know. I, I want to give the Guardians credit. Uh, they deserve it. They won. We're going to talk about a couple teams in the Blue Jays and the Cardinals that people really liked. Like, you know, we're World Series prediction teams that they are now out with two home games and two losses. So, Guardians deserve their credit for advancing and moving on. Uh, this Rays team, I mean, you know, did you see a single person online that was like, I think this Rays team is the one that's going to make a run? No, it was everyone saying, like, Rays devil magic or whatever. It right. Was like, maybe Can't it'll surprise us. 
that's what we always talk about. Rays fans get really mad at us. It's hard to put a finger on this team. Um, well, it's because if, the they, end, if it, they scored one run in 13 innings, they would have won this game. In the end, it was the offense. It just didn't show up. And I, you could either say, well, it's it was thin because of injuries. Uh, it's not as deep as other teams. Or you could say the Guardians just fucking threw the ball, man. Yeah. You know, you can go either way there. I thought there were some really cool moments in this game. Weird with all these numb fingers. What's going on with all these numb fingers? So, is this a is this a is this a ploy to get your relievers maximum warm up time? I'm currently leaning that way. Um, I don't know. I'd love to tap in Peter and Jerry and see what they know because you know they're they're our bullpen guys. But um, I mean Fairbanks, I'll say this. I mean to come in eleven pitches, um, and only three strikes. That is unlike him. Um, yeah, and he. You know, I, I don't know if there's a code word for like, hey, you know, we need you to come out of the game and say it's an injury. So say, you know, if you see me come out and grab my left knee, make sure you say there's no feeling in my hand. I don't know. I'm going to assume Pete Fairbanks wasn't feeling good because um, he wasn't. So uh, I don't know. It's it's one of those weird things with baseball that the, the two things that I've been questioning, uh, the clock the the pitch clock that's going to come in next year, do we want that for the playoffs? Is that maybe a regular season thing and it'll... Because, you know, those playoff moments that do breathe and you're in it, those are kind of dope, right? And then the other thing yeah. is the the three batter minimum, which um, I don't know, has... I don't think anyone's really super lost in. I, I think with some of the roster stuff we've done and how pitchers get used, I, I don't think teams would really abuse it that... I, I don't know. Do we need a three pitcher minimum? Maybe that's an off season conversation, but I I don't know. I don't know. It seemed suspect at the time. I I know in like Fairbanks, I, I'm not gonna accuse him of it. Oh, I don't think he's trying to do anything shady or whatever. Yeah. I mean, he, it was rough watching him pitch. Was rough. Then Adam Adams comes in, and uh, or Adam, excuse me, comes in, hits. Rosario right away, and now if you're a Guardians fan, you're like, this is it. This is our moment. Yeah. We have Jose Ramirez up right now. Freaking K's him, and then gets the double play with Naylor, and that was a massive moment in the game, and that's when you started to say, hey, the Rays, man, they're going to freaking find a way, aren't they? But those batches could never get going. Ramirez with that play, too, in the 12th. They, everyone keeps saying the Ramirez play, but Josh Naylor – Deserves yeah. half the credit. And a long in-between hop kind of thing. Uh, and he just, he's been doing that, man. He can stretch over there. He can pick it. And that gives you the confidence, if you're Jose Ramirez or any of the Guardians infielders, to just chuck it over there, dude. you got to get rid of the ball. Just get it over there somewhere around. And you got a big boy over there making plays. Uh, that was incredible, though. I, I audibly gasped. Uh, watching that play. It was amazing. And dude, I mean, that's it's a game saver. And by the way, Josh Naylor, um, I'm going to double check and get into the stats. I mean, in the minor leagues, he played, he he did, ah, he split time between first base and outfield. Um, When he came up, he was mostly. That's a big boy in the outfield. He was mostly playing outfield when he originally came up. This year has easily been, his most run at first base, 88 games at first base. Coming into this year, I think he had something like 20. So, yeah, a, a huge. How easily could we be sitting here if Josh Naylor doesn't pick that? And it's like, raise devil magic, bro. They force you to make the play. They get the <laughs> run across. They win one nothing. They're probably going to win this series. Instead, we talk about how great that play is. We talk about. Innings and innings and innings with not a lot of threats, if we're being honest. Um, you know, the, the other biggest threat early on in this game uh, was during Fairbanks. He comes out. He's wild. We get runners on. Uh, Adam comes in out of the bullpen. He hit, plunks a dude. It's bases loaded. He throws two balls to Jose Ramirez. 2-0 changeup. Down and out of the zone, Ramirez swings through it, changes the whole... It would have been 3-0, bases loaded, um, changes the whole inning. And yeah, I mean, that's... As we go through, I, I mean, that game, you know, there was a couple times runners got to second and third and nobody could just 
put the barrel on it and let one drop. Um, that, you know, hey, kudos to Cleveland. They, uh, they win their two games at home. They pitched. Uh, McKenzie and Glassnow, like you said, those guys deserve the biggest claps. I mean, Tyler Glassnow. Tyler Glassnow coming back uh, from TJ last August and then throwing five shutout in a playoff game. The next year, that's insane. Karen Shack, Stefan, Class A, Sandlin, Morgan, De Los Santos, and Hanches. Three innings out of him, uh, which is really, just really, really impressive. And the guys, you know, Tampa deserves a shout out too. Glass now to Fairbanks, who we, we talked about that, but Adam, Rasmussen, Cleaver, Armstrong, Rayleigh. And that is where I did think that this game, as the later it got, when they went to Rasmussen, who people thought could be the next day starter, that's when that Rays ideology of, like, let's get outs and figure it out, I thought that was going to be advantage Rays, having been in some big games before and willing to do that, and it turned out it wasn't. Guardians, guard dogs, pull it off. And then I thought it was interesting. Who's on the mound for the walk-off homer, his first relief appearance in nine years? Is that even right? I think that so. seems crazy to me. But, yeah, I mean, it's Corey fucking Kluber, man. Yeah. Back in his home where he was one of the best pitchers in baseball. Gives up the walk off Jack. Interesting moment for him, I'm sure. Very surreal, dude. You're with this Rays team. It's the 15th inning in a playoff game. I'd like to know what he was thinking out there. Not like, what were you thinking throwing that pitch? Like, what was going on in his mind? Because it had to be a strange moment for him. Yeah. Him like that. And this, this doesn't really matter, but first pitch of the at-bat was a strike that got called a ball. And you wonder, you know, just the flow of baseball, what, what does that do to a guy? But, yeah, man, I mean, you talk about a guy, you know, this guy's career. <laughs> Cy Young's in the bag, did it did it in Cleveland, uh, and then he's kind of been vagabondy and rehabbing, but... You know this. This guy was the dude. This guy was Be- This guy was better than Bieber. This guy was two Cy Youngs. He's getting MVP votes. Uh, here he is as a 36 year old coming out of the pen, uh, throwing you know 84 mile per hour cut pieces. Um, yeah, there's got to be a lot of mixed emotions for him. Um, Cleveland is going on to face the Yankees. We'll be doing a series uh, preview on that. Uh, that'll come out tomorrow. Um, so I, I don't know. I guess in this game, in this series, I think we should do a probably a brief goodbye to Tampa and anything else you have on Cleveland. What do you want me to say to Tampa? I don't know, man. Say goodbye and give them a hug right now or something? Yeah. I, I mean, you're, a, you're an alum. The I am an alum. You're a, Tampa Bay hangs on to your every word. I think you nailed it, though, man. This is a team that benefited from the expanded playoffs. Look, I like watching them play. Uh, some people don't. Uh, I think it's interesting the way they approach the game. They have some real, really high end talent there. I love watching Wander play. Uh, it's going to be more of the same next year. Uh, hopefully, they you know stave off the injury bug a little bit better. Uh, go make some, go make some moves. I, I want I want to see Tampa like actually get away from everything that they do and go sign somebody. Like, they just did it with Wander. That's a massive deal that you don't see them doing very often. I hope they go out and try to get someone else in the in the, in the offseason. I'm was, very curious to see what they do. Was this the first playoff series where Tampa had the higher payroll? Tampa is at 100 mil. Cleveland was at 80. I wonder. We might have to get R&D on that. Um, they're like, so that that's what they're going to do. They're going to go shed payroll. We can't be that team. <laughs> Let's get it down to 30 mil. We need to be the underdog. That's how this team wins. <laughs> um, no, Trev, it, it is interesting, and we're going to have all offseason to talk about it, but, you know, their advantage is being able to just get guys who pitch. I wonder if they start investing more on the offensive side. Like, you know, we see these guys, Jock Peterson types, that you can get on one-year deals. I, I, I wonder if that's the next step for the Rays because, I mean, it, they wasted a beautiful outing. I mean, 14 shutout innings? Like I, I, I know hitting was wasn't at a pre or was at a premium. I don't know, but one run and we would be talking about a game, a game three today. I think that's one thing you can you know be happy about as a Rays fan is Glass now came back and looked phenomenal. Yeah, so that's very very nice for you. 
you can say, we got this guy ready to go, you know, plus the other starters you have. I mean, you have the makings of a good team. You need to go supplement the offense a little bit, get healthy, all that jazz. Tampa, we will see you guys and talk about you guys a lot this offseason. I think Kiermaier's contract's up. We've talked about that a lot. So they're all, uh, interested to see where we're at with the Rays next year. And Cleveland, hello. Uh, facing me, John Boy, and Zach's Yankees. Chris Rose. Is this Rose. like 98 did they do this? Chris Is that Ro the last time? Chris Rose is coming through. Um, I mean, they've done it more recently. They've done it against Jose Ramirez, uh, 2017, I think. Um, okay. They took the first. I just two when games. I think of Guardians or I think of Indians, Yankees, I think right. of 1998 for some reason. Yeah. Is that weird? No, I mean that that Indians, the Yankees dynasty, kind of got in the way of a Indians dynasty. They were so good, so so good. Richie Saxon, really uh how much would we have liked him on talking baseball in 98? Last question before yeah. we move on. Does Oscar Gonzalez give his belt back to Sandy Alomar? Ooh, no. He has to keep it, right? Yeah. Did he wear it. it the rest of the game? I don't know. Keep, what was the story I there? I didn't hear that. Guardians he fans. The belt, gets, gets, the, gets the belt from Sandy. I'm assuming he kept it on the rest of the game unless they went back and got him a new belt. I don't know. We need, we need the scoop. Guardian fans, sound off in the comments. We will see you a lot next week. I mean, check out Talking Yanks. Check out Talking Baseball. We'll be live streaming with Papa Rosie on Tuesday night. A bunch of Yankee fans and Chris Rose. That is going to be quite the scene. Excited to see you guys there.